Amanda was abandoned by her husband and had to take on the responsibility of caring for her autistic son alone. Unemployment was high, but one day, she managed to get a job at the best hotel in the area. However, on a certain day, her boss ordered her to do something completely unethical and inhumane. Amanda needed to make a decision. Embark on this thrilling story now. If you're already a fan of our channel and want to support us in creating more captivating content, please show your love by hitting the like button. Let's dive into the story. On a calm afternoon in a quiet town, Amanda focused on cooking while the pots boiled. The tension between her and Gabriel was almost palpable. She couldn't understand how Gabriel could consider a move without consulting her. We have our life here, our friends, our community. And what about Raphael? You know that since the diagnosis of mild autism, we have to understand that sudden changes are difficult for him, not out of whim, but due to a real limitation. Gabriel, leaning against the doorframe with his arms crossed, responded with a bitter sarcasm. Oh, sure. Now in addition to not walking, Raphael has autism. You're seeing problems where there aren't any, Amanda. He's just a child who had an accident and doesn't walk. Maybe he has social problems. Nothing more than that, this excess of diagnoses is taking away the simplicity of his life. Amanda felt a pang in her chest hearing Gabriel speak like that. How can you be so insensitive? He's your son. Ignoring his autism diagnosis won't make the condition disappear. He needs support, not your denial. Gabriel sighed deeply, looking out the window. Look, Amanda, this is related to my work. I don't need your permission. This is an opportunity one can't miss. I've always been just another architect here in this abandoned town. But in the big city, I can really make a difference, expanding my horizons. I need this for myself. Amanda, now trembling slightly, set the spoon aside and turned to face him. It seems like we're just accessories in your life. Gabriel, we're your family. Do you really think you can drag us into a completely new life without thinking about the consequences? And what about everything we've built here? Gabriel ran his hands over his face, clearly exasperated. I've made plenty of sacrifices, Amanda. Sacrificed my career, my dreams for you and Raphael. Now, when I finally have a chance to achieve something bigger, you want to keep me here because of a diagnosis and a situation I never asked for. Amanda looked at him with tear-filled eyes. So to you, we're a burden, a sacrifice? Don't you see that we're talking about our son's life, his stability and happiness? It's not just about your career, it's about our family. Personally, I love this town and don't want to leave. Can't you understand that? Gabriel turned his back to avoid facing Amanda and muttered to her. Sometimes, I just wish things were different, easier. I deserve an opportunity, Amanda. I deserve to be recognized as more than just any architect from a touristy town, and having to deal with a stupid wife and a limited son isn't what I deserve. With her voice choked with sadness, Amanda responded, and I deserve a husband who is present to fight with us, not against us. Raphael deserves a father who understands him and accepts him as he is. Look at the atrocities you're saying to me. We can't just abandon everything because you want something different. Amanda, tears now streaming down her face, looked at Gabriel with even more disgust. When did you turn into this monster, Gabriel? The man I loved for so many years would never have been so cruel. Her voice trembling with anger and sadness, she continued, I've made sacrifices too. I sacrificed staying at home to take care of Raphael. It was a decision we made together. How dare you use that against me now? And don't forget that if Raphael can't walk, it's because of an accident that was your fault. Gabriel, visibly affected but trying to maintain composure, replied firmly. I wasn't to blame for that accident, Amanda. It happened many years ago, and it was the other car that collided with us head-on. He ran a hand over his face, trying to control the emotion in his voice. You're crazy to throw that in my face after all this time. I know the accident itself wasn't your fault, Gabriel, Amanda replied wiping away tears, but her voice still trembling. But Raphael lost movement in his legs because you didn't secure the chair properly and lied to me about it. That's something we can't ignore, as we're talking about facts. Gabriel shook his head in frustration. So you'll always come back to this point if you hold on to so much resentment about it. Why didn't you leave me earlier? This marriage has been over since that day, since the accident. Do you really think I'm to blame? Even today, how do you think your life would be without me? You clearly couldn't keep a house, let alone this apartment. Feeling a surge of indignation, Amanda confronted him firmly. Don't you dare belittle me. I do everything for Raphael, our son. Everything I do is to ensure he has the best possible future, to be strong and independent despite any adversity. 
With a look of disdain, Gabriel replied, You think you're helping Raphael, but in reality, you're limiting him. Not just because of his legs, but being a problematic mother, you're creating a world where he's just a victim, where he'll never learn to be independent. Amanda, now sobbing, spoke openly through tears. You have no right to insult me like this, to insult our son. I love Raphael more than my own life. Everything I do is for him. So he grows up knowing he can overcome any challenge with or without help. The difference is, instead of giving in and pretending problems don't exist, I face them and help our son. And don't be fooled by my tears, I'm not just any woman. For my son, I'll work at anything, Gabriel. I'd never leave him helpless. Gabriel looked at Amanda with a mocking and disdainful expression. You work? I didn't know that was an option. So here I am being an idiot paying for everything while you could be working. Raphael spends most of the day at school, an expensive school that I pay for, by the way. It all makes sense, Amanda. You should be working since you're such a warrior. Amanda felt anger rise at those words. You're ungrateful, Gabriel. I probably work more than you. I'm on duty for this house 24 hours a day, to keep everything clean, to prepare your meals with all the dietary restrictions you need, to take care of Raphael, and you still have the audacity to complain about the cost of your son's school, given his limitations. What else could we possibly do? Gabriel let out a bitter laugh. Ah, that's rich. Since I'm marked as the villain, might as well make the most of it. I'll let you know, I want a divorce. In a few weeks, I'll be moving out. Given the costs, I won't be able to keep maintaining this apartment for you. The amount I'll be forced to pay in alimony certainly won't cover all these costs. You have these weeks to get a job and find another place to live. Wasn't it you who said you can handle everything? Well, it's time to prove it. Amanda, now convulsively crying, looked at Gabriel with disgust. Gabriel, without a word of comfort or remorse, turned his back on her. With a heavy heart, she headed to Raphael's school. While stuck in traffic, her thoughts were in turmoil. She knew the next few weeks would be challenging, but she was determined to stay strong for her son. When she arrived at the school, she looked at Raphael and her heart warmed at the sight of her son. How was your day at school, Raphael? How are you feeling? Amanda asked as she got into the car. Raphael, in his innocence, recounted his day. Nobody makes jokes about my wheelchair. What I really like are the robotics classes. I want to learn to make robots and make robotic legs for myself. Amanda smiled with tears in her eyes. Raphael, I'm glad you found something that interests you, she said, trying to keep her voice steady. But son, I have some news that's not so good. Your father has decided to move somewhere else to work. So we won't be seeing Gabriel for a while. Amanda looked at Raphael, carefully searching for signs of how he was taking the news. It'll just be you and me, Raphael. We won't need such a big apartment. So maybe we'll have to move to a smaller apartment in another part of town where it's cheaper, Amanda explained trying to shield Raphael from the full weight of the situation. I'll try to get a new job so you can stay in the same school, but I'm not sure if I can do that because the school you're in now is a bit expensive. Do you understand? She asked. Raphael simply nodded in agreement. The next day, Amanda woke up at Kate's house with a tired expression, a reflection of the recent turbulence in her life. Kate, noticing her friend's condition, made coffee, and the two sat in the cozy living room. Amanda began to pour her heart out, words flowing like a torrent of suppressed emotions. Kate listened attentively. My only concern is Raphael, Amanda confessed. It was so hard to find an inclusive school that would accept a wheelchair-bound student with Raphael's limitations. Finally, he's happy and comfortable there. They're so inclusive, teaching self-acceptance. Kate, you have no idea what a relief it is for a mother to see that her child doesn't come home crying because of cruel nicknames from classmates. Kate nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. I can imagine, she replied. Raphael is such a sweet and special child. And Amanda, you know that if you need anything, you can count on me. I have a lot of schedule limitations due to work, but I'll help you in any way I can. Thank you, Kate. That means a lot to me, Amanda said with tears of gratitude in her eyes. Just knowing that I can count on you is a huge relief. Sometimes, all we need is someone to listen to us. I'm so desperate for any job. I put my whole life into this marriage, taking care of Gabriel, the house, and especially Raphael. Now that I'm alone, it feels like I've lost years of my professional life, Amanda confessed. Kate, with an understanding and empathetic look, replied, I was thinking, the hotels here on the coast are always hiring. They need people in various positions. I heard the other day that they're looking for new employees. Maybe it's an opportunity for you to start. Amanda, with her eyes shining, nodded. She responded enthusiastically, 
that's true. I thought working as a receptionist or in any other position in a hotel could be a great start for me. Kate nodded, encouraging her. Hotels have all kinds of jobs. Whether it's at the front desk, administration, room service, the options are diverse. Amanda nodded, feeling strengthened by her friend's confidence. A few days later, in her tireless job search, Amanda called her best friend, Kate. Kate, I'm starting to lose hope. I've been to so many hotels, been through countless interviews, and the answer is always the same. They wanted someone younger, someone who hasn't been out of the job market as long as I have. Kate, ever optimistic, replied firmly. The world of work can be cruel, I know, but remember, all you need is one yes. Don't give up. Amanda sighed, trying to absorb the confidence her friend had in her. I have another interview scheduled. It's at the hotel in the most luxurious part of the city. I'm nervous, Kate. Do you think I have a chance there? I feel like it's much more than anywhere else I've been rejected from. Kate, excited, encouraged Amanda even more. You'll get this one. Don't give up. Call me later to tell me it all went well. Amanda arrived at the hotel with nervousness. The reception was full of young candidates, all displaying a beauty that starkly contrasted with Amanda's more mature and sober appearance. As she waited, she couldn't help but sigh. It seems more like a model test than a receptionist one. Do I have any opportunity here? I need to try for Raphael. When the interview began, a man with an aura of authority entered the room. It was Brandon Fonseca, the owner. He began speaking directly and imposingly about the receptionist's role in his hotel. As you can imagine, my time is extremely valuable, so I hope you make the most of this opportunity. I like to actively participate in various stages of selection in my hotel, he said, examining the candidates with a critical eye. His eyes fixed on Amanda, and his expression showed surprise and perhaps a hint of disdain. Ma'am, this is an interview, not a mother's meeting. The participants' mothers should wait outside. Why would you be an exception? The room fell into an uncomfortable silence. Amanda felt her cheeks burn with shame, but she knew she couldn't afford to back down. I'm not the mother of any of these young ladies, Mr. Fonseca. I'm here for the receptionist position interview, Amanda replied, trying to keep her voice steady despite the humiliation. I know I don't fit the usual profile you're looking for, but I have experiences and skills that could be very valuable to your hotel. Brandon looked her up and down, with a smile full of sarcasm. Are you sure you want to participate? Amanda took a deep breath, gathering all her courage. Yes, I'm sure. Brandon looked at Amanda with a malicious smile. You simply don't fit the profile my clients expect. But today, I'm feeling particularly generous. I can offer you a position on the cleaning staff, which seems more suitable to your profile. I'll make a point of personally checking your progress. Amanda felt a wave of humiliation, but the need to take care of herself outweighed wounded pride. With a broken yet firm voice, she replied, I accept the position, Mr. Fonseca. You won't regret giving me this opportunity. In the days that followed at the hotel, Amanda's life became a true ordeal. The weight of humiliation and inadequacy weighed on her every moment. However, one particular day stood out as one of the most challenging. While Amanda was carrying out her duties, two beggars appeared at the hotel. Surprisingly, they had enough money for a reservation. They claimed they got it through generous souls who helped them. They only asked for a quiet night's sleep, as it was the closest hotel. However, the presence of the beggars was not well received by Brandon. He didn't like the idea of them staying there, even if they paid. With his usual false politeness, he expelled them, ordering them to leave immediately. But the two men remained outside, begging for a room, apparently with nowhere else to go. Brandon, demonstrating his cruel and despicable character, then ordered Amanda to throw water on them, just to make them feel colder. Even fearing the consequences, Amanda knew she couldn't directly defy her boss's orders. He made it clear that either she did it, or she would be fired. With a lump of anguish in her throat and butterflies in her stomach, Amanda found herself compelled to make a decision that contradicted her principles and her humanity. Out of love for Raphael and the necessity to keep her job, she felt obligated to follow Brandon's orders, even if it left her feeling deeply ashamed and regretful. With a heavy heart and tears in her eyes, Amanda picked up the bucket of water and quietly approached the two men huddled outside the hotel. Brandon watched with a malicious smile, anticipating the execution of his command. However, at the last moment, Amanda's conscience outweighed her boss's pressure. She dropped the bucket, refusing to go through with the cruel act. With determined steps, she walked up to Brandon, who awaited her at the hotel reception, already showing signs of irritation on his arrogant face. Before he could utter a word, 
Amanda began to voice the truths that had been trapped in her throat for so long. You're arrogant and despicable. I can't condone your inhumane actions any longer, she exclaimed, her voice echoing through the hotel lobby as guests' curious gazes turned to the scene. Desperate to contain the situation, Brandon attempted to interrupt her, urging her to keep silent. But Amanda had already made her decision. With resolve, she handed in her resignation right there, refusing to be another victim of her boss's tyranny. Back in her modest home, Amanda found herself overwhelmed by despair and uncertainty. She questioned whether confronting Brandon and losing her job was the right thing to do. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she lay on her bed, seeking solace in the solitude of her room. However, fate had other plans for Amanda. As she lamented on her bed, the phone rang. On the other end of the line was Kate, with news that would change her life. Amanda, I need your resume immediately, Kate said, her voice brimming with excitement. There have been job openings at the company where I work, and I know you're the right person for one of them. With tears of gratitude in her eyes, Amanda sent her resume to Kate. Shortly after, she received the long-awaited call confirming that she had landed the job. Thus, with determination and the support of a true friend, Amanda charted a new course for her life and that of her son, leaving behind the days of humiliation and tyranny at the hotel. With her new job, she found not only financial stability but also a sense of fulfillment and dignity that had long been denied to her. Do you believe in the belief that we should do everything our superiors order us to do and bow our heads, even if it's absurd? What would you do in Amanda's place? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you were touched by this story, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't miss out on another heartfelt video, which you can find on your screen right now. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss an update, and until the next video.